Praise be to Jesus and Mary. You're listening to Returning to Catholic Roots in a New Age World, a podcast hosted by Holly and Mandy. Let's begin our show. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Returning to Catholic Roots in a New Age World podcast. My name is Holly, and as always, I'm joined here by my mother, Mandy, and we're happy to be back for another week. And we'll begin our episode by saying, Jesus, meek and humble of heart, make Make our our hearts hearts like unto thine. thine. So, yeah, um, we're in June now. Yep. Happy 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 month month of the the sacred sacred heart of Jesus. Jesus. And, uh, (laughs) yeah, so uh, we all know it's a great month to honor our Lord and the (laughs) sacred heart. And not some other things. So (laughs) we'll leave that there. But I did want to, last week in our episode, we um, put the call out there for anyone who has like a page or a shop to share that with us so we could give you a little shout out. And I did get a very nice message um, from someone that I've been following on Instagram for a while now. Um, Her little um, shop is called Star of the Sea Catholic Gifts. And so she has a really nice Instagram page. She shares so many um, really nice things. Her products as well as like little... um, I don't know what you call those things. You can't call them memes. Like, you know, like little, um, they're not memes, but like, you know, like little saint quotes and and pictures and stuff like that. Yeah. what I'm saying. I don't know what we call them. I don't know what you call them because you don't call them memes because memes are supposed to be funny. Are they reels? No, no. Like, I mean. Just little posts? Just like little posts, you know, like she shares a lot of really good Catholic posts and her products as well as I guess what I'm trying to say, but. Anyways, and she sells on Etsy. So um, what I what I'll do is I'll post um, a link in the description on this video to her Etsy page and as well to her Instagram page because um, Etsy is great and everything. But I find um, that you see a lot. You get to see a lot of the products right on Instagram. You know, yeah. like in through little videos and through little reels and stuff like that. And it's nice to see the products in real time. Right, not real right. time, but you know what I mean. In Rather action. than just an Etsy picture, yeah, you know. Right. But she does beautiful, beautiful rosaries and um, and has some really great, nice um, Catholic um, merchandise. And she is um, a set of a set of a contest. So right. you know yeah. you're not going to get uh, mm-hmm. what we said last week. You know, JP two on a rosary or Mother right. Teresa or whatever. Yeah. You know. So anyway, so um, thank you so much um, for sending me along that message. Um, And uh, what's her name? Lauren. And I will. um, And Kevin did a nice commercial for her, if I recall correctly, on here on the Catholic Benny podcast. So, um, but if anyone's looking for a nice rosary, uh, I find a rosary is a perfect gift to give. Yeah, I find you can never have too many rosaries. Even if you have one already, you can put one in the car. You can have one. Like, I have one in my church bag. I have one in my car. I have one in my pocket. I have, yeah. you know, them all over the house. Like, you can never have too many And roses. if I have a special one, and I have a special one that one of my daughters gave yeah. me. That's I, one of my special ones, too. Yeah, I just keep yeah. it. I wonder how much she paid for them. Because it's very special it's and it's very nice. nice. You know, I don't know Is where she got that. Is it the one that she, because it's the confraternity one? With the medal for the confraternity? Is that what? I don't think that's on there. Well, then maybe you got a special, different special rosary than what I got. I got it for um, um, Christmas, I think. Oh, year. yeah. Well, she gave me one because she put a little picture, the confraternity, the same picture that's in the Mother Love book. Oh, you mean on the bag? On the bag, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, that's, yeah, the, that's one. the one. Yeah, that's the one. Okay. I thought you meant a medal. No, no, no uh, sorry, I meant a picture. She put the pi- so in the Mother Love book, when you open the book, there's a picture there of Mary on the right. inside. She put that picture on the bag. Yeah. So... So anyway, so yeah, so um, give her give her a check out, give her a follow on Instagram, and, and who um, doesn't want a special rosary? And who doesn't want a special rosary? Yeah, you know, to, I do. No, I know. I want seriously. more special rosary. Seriously, I mean, like you think about it, like often we buy a rosary. I mean, half the time I'm I'm using those plastic ones. Yes. Because, um, you know. I don't know why. Because they're all they're over just the place. All over and available, <laughs> and readily with, available. And with little children, mm-hmm. you know. But uh and I, I really I don't like to and I am actually notorious for losing rosaries. Right. So if it's a special one, I keep it by my bedside and this rosary right. never leaves this spot. Mm-hmm. Mostly I say a lot of rosaries in the car. Yeah. I say a lot of them in the car and then 
if I get distracted or I drop my rosary on my lap, this is how I lose a lot of rosaries. And when I stand up... And then it falls out. It falls out. And I have, I've forgotten it's there. You know? Well, maybe if you... If you maybe, maybe, just maybe, mm-hmm. if you've dropped a rosary out of the car when you stand up, maybe somebody will get it that needs it. Well, I hope so. I yeah. sure hope so. You know, you maybe add that to your prayers. If I ever drop another rosary, yeah, please put it in the path of someone that needs it. You know, right. So, anyways, um, yeah. So, just a little shout out there, and again, putting the call out. If anybody has any page, and it doesn't have to be a um a product page per se, too. Like if you run like a a Catholic Facebook group or something, and you want us to shout it out, let us know, and um and yeah, we'll take a look and see. So, anyways, um, anything else you want to share with the group? I don't know. It's <laughs> Yeah, no, I think it's been a very lax day. We're getting ready for graduation. We're getting here. ready for graduations here in Canada. Um, first year of graduations for our school because it's the first year for our school. Mm-hmm. So this is really exciting. Oh, and I did want to talk about something then, speaking of that, since you brought it up. Uh-huh. Um, I'm doing this thing for the graduating students, and it's just an idea that... Uh, popped into my head but I'm going to be launching it I'm making them this week and then I'm going to be putting them on the website and I know um in in the U.S. you're I'm pretty sure your graduations are long over right like they're already out of school right right but maybe something to keep in mind for next year or you know if there's some random graduation from something else um I had this thought that you know the students the graduating students are graduation is basically like you're all done school and we're sending you off to start your life. Right. You know, and I thought, you know, these these kids, they should really be starting off their life on the right foot and we should try to make everything as God-centered and God-focused as we can. And what better way to start your life with your patron saint by your side? Right. Hanging right, right by your ear, almost if you will. Yeah. <laughs> so I have these whispering charms, in your whispering ear. Whispering in your ear. So I asked all the kids in the graduating class at our school to tell me their patron or any saint. It didn't have to be their patron. I just asked them to pick a saint who they would want by their side as they graduate. And then I'm making these tass these charms to hang in their tassels on right. their hats. So um I mean, I'm going to be, I have to make them anyways, and it's something that I've wanted to sell for a while now. So I am going to be putting those on the website, but I just wanted to share that with you all if you um, need anything. Well, like I said, graduation is over in the U.S., but keep it in mind for next year. Because I I feel like every every graduating student should have a saint by their side as they walk, walk across that stage. And then I feel like if we, if we do these things for our children, I mean, these aren't my kids, but I want to do it anyways. And I, you can better believe I'll be doing it for my own daughter. Like, you know, they'll they'll know that it's there. Right. You know, that's how you put the Catholicism into things, is yeah. actually physically putting it there. Right, right. You know? Right. And we have to work really hard on that because we're fighting a lot of stuff. Right, because I, I, I'm I on the Internet. I see things. And, and you see they do this thing um, in the public school system. I'm pretty sure they do it in the U.S. too. I'm... I'm sure it's a U.S. video that I'm watching. Right. Where they decorate the graduation caps. Oh, do they? Yeah, like they plaster them in all kinds of nonsense. Uh-huh. They actually decorate their graduation caps. Mm-hmm. With whatever, their likes and interests and hobbies or whatever, you right. know? And I'm like, eh. You know, like it's just so... I've not seen it, like, so I can't comment. it's not anything bad, but, but it's just I would like... Just, yeah. You know, it, it's secular. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's, it's like, you know, oh, I like sports cars and race cars, so I'm going to deck out my hat in sports cars and race cars. I'm just using that as a loose example. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but that's what spawned this there's idea. Always this, it's always that there's not something wrong with it. It's always that there's something better. better. Yes, and, well, that's what spawned this idea for me. It was actually ga- these decorating of the graduation caps is what gave me the idea. Really. Right. Because I thought... Every time you do something monumental in your life, wouldn't you want a patron saint by your side? Or wouldn't you want to call on your guardian angel? Or wouldn't you want to, uh-huh. you know, have that that extra bit of um, sanctity, for lack of a better word, there? like Or, uh-huh. like, com- not comfort, but, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, anyways, that's where this came from. And I thought, you know, these, these kids, these children, they should have their saints by their sides, you know? Right. I mean, we have to, I mean, the thing too, is we have to work 
extra hard at thinking about how to combat the secular. Yeah. You know, I mean, we had uh, a couple weeks ago here, we had a shower for a young girl Mm -hmm. who's uh, getting married in our parish, and she's leaving to go to the United States. And um, we decided that we would say the rosary at the shower. Now, I've never been to a shower that said Mm -hmm. the rosary before. You know, but this was obviously, it was all church people. Mm -hmm. Everybody, I mean, normally showers are not... They're a mix of people. They're a mix of people, so you wouldn't actually, you know, say, okay, now it's time for the rosary, you know. um, But we did that just because we're always looking for ways to incorporate our religion in all of our actions. Actually, you know what I should do? That just gave me a thought live here on the podcast. Oh, really? I should take the game that I made and put it on the website. What game? The bridal oh, shower game. The bridal game. Yes. Yeah, so, so because, you know, we were very fortunate that the shower was all church people. So if it's all church people, what? then it's it should be what's, what's important, important to you? us. Yeah. And you made. you made, I, made a, I made bridal shower games that were Catholic-centered. Like, I, I'm not... I'm not against the typical bridal shower games as long as there's nothing crude in them. Sometimes they can get crude. They can get really crude. They can get really crude. But, you know, the you know, there's nothing wrong with the ones that are okay. It's just all fun. But I wanted to make a game that I knew this particular woman would like. Yeah. Because, you know, she is very, she tries to live her life very Catholic-centered. Yeah. And I knew she would like this game, and she loved it. Right. So it was a patron saint game, a matching, like, match the patron saint for the occasion for newlyweds. Right. No, and it's not that they weren't actual the patron They weren't the actual patron saint, but it's like, first time your husband loses his car keys. Yes. Who Who's the saint he would call on? You know, you know. that kind of thing. Right. So uh, I will I will post that game on the website. People, you can just download it. Okay, right. Have, and you're having it. a shower and, you know, and if it's mostly Catholic, Catholic people. Or even if it's not, you want to do it? Go ahead. Hey, that's you. Yeah. You do you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, but yeah. no, I think I You think do Catholic, Catholic you. you. Yeah, that's what we should change that saying to. <laughs> you do you Catholic, Catholic you. you. And why well, I, I, that's kind of funny cuz a, a friend of um, mine at the parish this I've talked about her before. Um, she's new to our parish, right? And I was having a conversation with her and she was telling me because she's new to the religion, mm-hmm. you know, and she has, you know, pictures of Jesus everywhere. Yeah. And of course, the people she, the majority of the people that she knows are not Catholic. Right. Which is understandable when you're new to the religion. Right. Right. You know, and she says, so people get all strung out because now they come into her house and Jesus is everywhere. And she's like, look, I didn't tell you to come Come here. here. Yeah. You know, and so we were kind of laughing and we were saying, uh, we were actually having a really good laugh about it. Like, okay, you know, okay, you do you. You. (laughs) Just don't tell me how to do me. Well, and it's so, it's so true because, say, like, say if you went into somebody's house and they had modern art all over the wall. Yeah. You wouldn't, you wouldn't go in there and go, oh, what's with all this modern art? Yeah. You know, like, it's, it's just their art. You would just yeah. go, oh, these people like, well, I would hope you wouldn't say that, but. Well, you, would, you shouldn't say You that. shouldn't say that, but yeah. I'm just saying. Be critical. The, of- the, the Catholic decor gets the reaction that just regular decor does not, is yes. what I'm saying. Yes. That's my point, yeah. you know? Like, nobody thinks twice when you go into your house and you got landscape paintings. Right. Or eucalyptus. You could, or eucalyptus, <laughs> yeah. I was, I was trying not to bring that up. Because I don't want to hammer the eucalyptus to death. People are going to think I have something against it. You know? I got eucalyptus in this room right now. Yeah. I'm staring right at it. It's, not, it's coming out of a crock, so... A, an old pot, a yeah. pot. crock. <laughs> that that sounded really bad. A crock, you know, like an old like vintage pickle, crock. pickling barrel. Pickling barrel. I like vintage decor, so there's eucalyptus hanging out of it. There's nothing wrong with eucalyptus, <laughs> ladies. <laughs> and if you don't know what I'm talking about, you'll have to listen to last week's episode. <laughs> anyways, so um, yeah. So anyways, so yeah. Should we, uh, or do we got anything else we want to add there? Um, no. Actually, you know what? I should be marking these things down that I say I'm going to do, but I'll try to remember. So what that, were you doing now? Because I've already forgotten. I'm going to post the link to Lauren's shop. Okay. Star of the Sea Gifts. And I'm going to post, um, I'm going to put the bridal shower games on the website. There was a cutesy little bingo one that I'll put on there too. And I did them up really nice with flowery backgrounds. So they're really nice printables that you yeah. can print out. So try to remind yeah. me of that, Mom. Okay. 
Okay, so are we going to dive into our book? Yeah, let's dive into let's the dive book. Let's dive into our book. Okay, so last week we were talking about religious modesty, manners, mannerisms, and stuff. And um, this week we're continuing on. Um, we're still under the... Somebody, we always get the question that, because I, I think, I don't know if it was last week or the week before, somebody asked where to find this book. Yes. Uh, you can't. You can't. I'm wondering if we could put it on, though. But, you know, it's not much. It's, it's not, not much. Maybe I, I could, in my spare time, just type scan it. it. No, no, you don't even oh, have to right. type it. You I, can just... see, I forget about technology. Yeah, Mom, we could, <laughs> I can just scan the book and put it on the website. Why don't you do that? Yeah. It's so small. It's so small. I could just scan it. It, Yeah, I'll do that. I mean, even though... It, it might not be ready for this week, but... Actually, no, I though, know it won't be ready for this week. Even though it takes us forever to get through a paragraph, yeah. it's not that big of a book. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll try to scan it, but you'll have to ignore our markings and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yes, we're those people that mark up books. <laughs> well, okay. it's easier than maybe if we scanned it. Of course, I was I'm the one that marks the book up. Yeah. You just read it. I just read it. You read it cold turkey. Yeah. Okay, so anyways, we're under the heading of manner. So, um, But I mark with pencil. Yeah, she, yeah so I could go through <laughs> and erase it. So continuing on where we left off, so quote, the third essential quality in the manner of a religious is graciousness. This quality is made up of generosity, kindly interest, and consideration for the feelings of others. The gracious sister is not forward, neither is she ill at ease. She knows how to meet people, end quote. Right, so she's not forward or ill at ease. Uh, do you know the one point I'm going to mark out here that I want to sp- uh, pay close attention to, because I think this often gets kind of lost or forgotten, is kindly interest. Yes. When you're talking to people, and, I, I, and I'm saying this because myself, I have to really try to work hard at this, act like you're interested. Yes. Like, don't, like, because people can sense that. Yes. Like, so even if you, even if you're not interested, like there are many topics people talk about and I'm sitting there and I'm just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, like you're just like, I am not interested in this topic. I could care less. I mean, that's just a re- I'm just being honest. That's a reality. Yeah. You are not going to be interested in everything that everybody talks about. But if somebody is going out of their way to talk to you and they're sharing something with you, you should just try to even faint a um, a little bit of interest, you know, right. a kindly interest. A kindly you should be interest. kind about it and just let them and and talk I mean, and, and that's a way of thinking of others and not yourself. And not yourself, right? Like you don't have to be entertained every. You don't have to be entertained all the time. No, like people don't have to be. It's all about you and what yeah. you like and what you don't like. You know, this is a, something that somebody's interested in. So, um, you know, and I mean, sh- that nine times out of ten, they're sharing it with you because they are so interested in there, and it's genuinely exciting for them, right? Whatever and sh- they're sharing with you. So, why do you want to bring a person down and act like you're not interested <laughs> when they're talking? You well, know? it's just unvirtuous. You're deflating them. It's totally unvirtuous, yeah. right? Like these are the qualities of virtue. Right, and the more we do of them, the more we spread God's goodness. Yeah. Right. So a, a thing as minor as being interested in, or, you know, in I'm I'm not gonna I don't want to say acting interested. No, but just give them your attention. Yeah. The there was a, there was a, a thing from the Imitation of Christ, and if you can't bear it joyfully, just bear it patiently. Yeah. Right. Like I mean, so I. Th- I think it would, that was about suffering. But this is kind of the same thing, yeah. right? So if you can't joyfully give that to you, another person. At least be patient. At least do it patiently patient. and for God, right? Yeah. Because, I mean, the end goal is that you are joyfully that person. Right. You joyfully want to give people. Right. That. Their turn. Their, their time. turn. Their time. I mean, and that is in the in the in the in the place of virtues. Since you just said it, it just brought to my mind. That is in the virtue of justice, right? Because justice is giving to our fellow men what is owed to, to them. them. Right, right. Right. You know, and and it's owed to people that you give them that consideration. Right. Right. You know. Anyway. Okay. Quote. Uh, the necessary accompaniment of a gracious manner is a kind, friendly smile. The cheering effect of such a smile girdles the globe. There is much inspiration in the popular saying, 
quote, when you smile, another smiles, and soon there are smiles and miles of smiles if you but smile, end quote. I like that. And there are smiles and miles of smiles. When you smile, smile, another smiles, and soon there are smiles and miles of smiles if you but smile. <laughs> I don't know, it's like a tongue twister. Yeah, but it's spreading but joy. Nice. It's spreading joy. It is spreading joy. You know, and when when you're with a person who is generally cheerful, yeah, which is a virtue again, right? Generally cheerful, um, it adds joy to the room. Yes, and it can bring a person out of their glumness. Yeah, for sure. You know, like maybe they're having a really bad hard day. Well, I'll tell you, um, you know, there's this thing that goes around a new age saying about uh, BRF. Yes. I, I believe we've talked about this before, and I was accused of having it quite some time ago. Yeah. I'm not going to say what it stands for. It's something resting face. You can figure out the B. Um, <laughs> but anyways, it's a new age thing. I didn't come up with it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but I I was told that I had it. Yes. By I, multiple people. And I know several people that really you know, have it. And, and that, was a lo- that was a long time ago, though, and no one has said that to me in a long time. Right. Because when someone told me that, a particular person told me that, and I was just like, I gotta, I gotta change that. Like, I can't keep having people say this about me. Like, oh, because, something wrong? You know, and, and well, no, like, well, well that's, that's what they do. They say, is something, something wrong? Are, are you no. okay? Is something wrong? And then you're like, no, nothing's wrong. wrong. I just don't feel like giving you any gracious attention. Right. Is what you might as well say. Right. Because really, and really when I, when I thought deep down about it, the whole thing, People, it's like the OCD, if we can go back to the OCD, they use it as a, as a crutch to say, I'm miserable, I'm not miserable, I, or I'm not miserable, I have BRF. Right. So, so I, this is the way I am. You just... And just deal with it. Just deal I'm with it. I'm not miserable. Not, it's I, nothing just, in- I just can't control my face. That's what I used to say. I can't control my face. And then I was like, you know, no, you, you have to control your face. Yes. You literally have to control your face yeah you cannot allow that that's your your manner you can't that yeah so so what you're telling what i was telling everybody is that's my manner that's my mannerism that's my manner that's my decorum that's how i carry myself and everybody just thinks i'm a "Hmm." yeah you know because and i and i i'm sure i still have moments where i'm sitting there and i probably do not look pleasant at all I know. I don't know. I haven't noticed. I mean, well, see, that's but I think I've worked really hard on trying yeah. not to. And and sometimes my husband will catch me. He was one of the people that told me. Yeah. And so I'll give him this. He'll be like, "Why are you so miserable?" And then I'll do this really weird smile, like yeah. this fake one. It's like, "Okay, go back to the way you were." Before. <laughs> I said, "What? I'm smiling." <laughs> He's like, "It's creepy," and I don't know. Oh. <laughs> but that's just me being silly. But no, so I I. And I used to sit with my arms crossed a lot. Yeah. A lot. I really used to do that a lot. If I was standing there, my arms were always crossed. If I was sitting, my arms were always crossed. And I've tried really hard not to sit like that. Because you, that also says you're... Do you think, though, that when people are like that deep down, they're not happy? Well, the, see, yeah, there may be something there. Because if I look, if I look back on my... I will, let's just call it my BRF era. Okay? <laughs> I was not happy. Right. I was not. I was a generally discontented person. Yeah. You know, I was moody. There were giant holes giant in Giant holes in my life. In your bucket. Not living my unabashedly Catholic life. Yeah. If you will, you know. So that it, it there is a correlation there, 100%, I think. Yes. I think so. But what I think is, though, that people just like to fall back on that. Right. They just like they just take that seat and like it's like they it's ride like it. it's like an actual medical condition. Yeah. It's not a medical condition. Yes. Like I'm sure so, disagree with me. You want a BRF is not a medical condition. Like <laughs> yeah. you do not have a medical condition. You literally can change it. You can you control, control yourself. Self, you know. You are in charge of you. you. <laughs> so when somebody says, you know, you do you. Just don't tell me how to do me. Right. You know, we have to do us properly. So, I mean, so that goes hand in hand with this. Like, you know, give somebody a smile. I'll tell you, today I went to Staples. I don't, do they have Staples in the States? It's an office supply store anyways. And I was, and I was, 
I'm going to say I looked approachable. Mm-hmm. Is what I feel like if you look approachable, people will approach you. Yeah. So I'm I'm going down the aisle, and I can see in my peripheral there's this woman, and she's chasing me down. <laughs> right? <Okay. laughs> and I'm like, oh, this woman wants to come and tell me. I'm like, no, don't be like that. Like, whatever she wants to say, just, you know. Like, you know, you can tell when someone's, co- the store was practically yeah. empty, and she's coming towards me, right? And she wasn't a staff, so I'm like, oh, what does she want? But I'm like, no, Holly, put a smile on your face and be kind, right? Yeah. You don't know what she wants. And, um... Because sometimes I will admit, when you're out and you're just going to get one thing, you just want to get in the store and yeah. get out. You know, I'm, not, I'm, not, no, I'm not validating it. I'm saying it's awful. But anyways. And she comes up behind me and she goes, excuse me. And I turn around and I go, yes. And then she's like, I'm leaving. But um, the, uh, the pr- at the print shop, they give you these coupons if you're going to buy something else in the store. And I'm not buying anything. So here, I'd like you to have this coupon. And I, like, got the biggest smile on my face. It was a good coupon, too. <laughs> and I was like, and I said, oh, really? I was like, oh, thank you so much. Like, yeah. I, I was actually genuinely like, man, this woman just saved me a lot of money. Yeah, You know, yeah. like, I and was here very, you didn't want to talk to and her. And here I didn't want to talk to her. Like, it was not that I didn't want to talk to her. I was, from the minute I saw her, but I, it wasn't like I tried to avoid her. But it was just like, oh, who wants to talk? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, it was yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah, but yeah. but I forced myself to be kind and gracious. And it wasn't that big of a stretch. But I'm just saying. Yeah. You know? So, like, and then and then I could tell, and maybe I read too much into things, but I could tell when I was genuinely happy and I smiled at her, she got the biggest smile on her face. Yeah. Because she felt, I'm going to guess. I don't want to have to presume. That she did something But she good. felt like, man, I did something really good there. Yeah, and you know that because I wasn't just like, oh, thanks. I was just you know? thinking, I was just thinking about that podcast on the dopamine. You gave her yeah. some dopamine. Yeah, you did. Like, and I and a I boost. Like she was doing me the favor. I saved ten bucks. You know, I know, but people but do like to feel like they've they, done like, something good. Yes, and and she and you could tell, and it just was written all over her face, and that's why that it just when you smile and other smiles like that literally. You know, and she pro- and you probably gave her a good day. Yeah. By being gracious. I mean, obviously well, I she so. did you a she good day. She gave turn. me a good day. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. You gave each you other know? a good day. It was That's great. I And I just, that's like, that just reminded me of that when you, because, you know, if I would have just been like, oh, thanks. Yeah. Cool. You know, like, she would have been like. Oh, like, oh, oh, thank you. You know, yeah. like, I, I know some I've, people. I've seen people do that before. When someone I goes out to. of their way to do something nice and they just get the cold kind of thanks, you know. Yeah. So, anyways, our smiles do have effects. One hundred percent effects, effects, effects. Anyways, okay. Well, we'll uh, go into that. I actually do know the difference between effect and, and effect. effect. I just an effect is the cause of something. something. So it's an effect. An effect. 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 An effect. I got, maybe I got it backwards. Now I gotta have to look it up. Now I've I've put you on the spot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Back to our book. Quote: The gracious sister will be the unselfish one. For selfishness is forced out when graciousness takes possession. End quote. Right. That was a short little sentence you wanted to touch <laughs> on there. Wasn't yeah. It? Well, because, uh, well, about being selfish. Yeah. So a gracious sister is not, so she's always thinking uh, of others. Right. You know, and I mean, I don't know when I personally, st- I, I know my dad. My dad was alive when it occurred to me that I didn't think of people enough. Mm-hmm. And I and I remembered that, and he was sick. My dad was pretty sick, and he had had these strokes, and you know, and then he was in wheelchair for a while. And I remember we went out to some dinner or something, and I, I remember I remember this moment because this was the moment that I decided that I would wait on people, mm-hmm. that I would make my life one of waiting on other people. Right. And that, you know, if he asked for something, I would do it immediately. Right. Because he was sick, you know. Of course, he was my dad, right? And, but I've carried, that was the moment. Now, that would be, he's been gone for, I don't know, six, seven, eight years now. Oh, yeah. A while now, right? So, that, I mean. 2015. Yeah, 2015. So, oh, wow. So, nine years. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, um, but, and, and you got to remember, so nine years ago, I would have been in my 50s. 
Right. So this is a little late to the game. <laughs> yeah. Like a little late to the game of deciding that I am going to make my life one of service right. for other people. Right. And we had, and, and I mean, that was a conscious decision that I made nine years ago. Right. And it was kind of funny because uh, we had a birthday party for my mother mm-hmm. on Saturday. Mm-hmm. And my brother who's not around that often, one of my brothers, he said to me, he said, well, no wonder no one ever wants to leave here. All you do is wait on everybody. (laughs) And I'm like, well, I'm glad you noticed. (laughs) (laughs) Finally. (laughs) After nine years, someone has taken note. But, you know, but but that was a conscious decision. Yeah. If, of nine years ago. To always get up and always do the thing, regardless. Right, right, right. right. You know, and I mean, it's just, it's just my way of trying to put the grace back in, right? Right. You know, like these are the things, these are the things that we do to, you know, to spread God's goodness. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, it's not just about the praying. Well, and and I think too, people are always like. I mean, maybe not. Maybe I'm the only one thinks this way. But people are always looking for the grand gesture, the big show, the big, the big act, the big moment, the big, you know. And it doesn't like. I'm gonna say saintly. Well, you be a t- saint, saintly act, saintly the thing. It's in the little things. Right. Well, Saint Teresa told us that. Right. And I'm reading her book right now. So this is you see throughout her whole book. It's in the little things. It's not in these big, big, big grandstanding. Um, mm. I mean, I'm not okay. I I want to ra- I want to phrase this really correctly here. I don't because there's absolutely, obviously, nothing wrong with like you know. I'm gonna. I'll just. This is the first example that comes to mind. But Saint Francis Xavier and all the people he baptized and all the people yeah. he saved. Obviously, every saint has their place. Right. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't strive for those big things. But what I think is we forget the oh. power in the little things. Yeah. And I, the biggest the biggest problem I had with St. Teresa, this was before. Um, this is when I was first a traditional Catholic because I just thought, like, people took this little way. Her little way is no way. Right. You know, like, they meant, oh, I don't have to do, like, I don't have to do anything because, you know... I'm following St. Teresa the little way. Right, right. And they, they and I was like, okay, you're not following the little way right. That yeah. means you do everything. Yeah. It does, but they're just little. But they're you're just doing, little. Yeah. You know. Well, and that that's that's the thing. That's my point. It's like, you know, as at times, and myself included, we're always looking for these big grand gestures that we can do for our Lord and these big grand things that we can do to show our love and, and, and earn sanctity. And... While we're looking at that and looking for those things, we're missing all the little things that are laying on the ground right in front of us. Yeah, it's like it's you know, like the stubbing your toe and offering it up for a holy soul in purgatory, rather than screaming out in pain. Yeah, or or the I mean, to me, because I mean, as I said, this is nine years old to me. It's not my. It wasn't my life. It wasn't my life, and quite frankly, before that, I was very selfish. Like, um. Oh, oh, can't you do that yourself? Or like, yeah. oh my gosh, are you going to make me do that? Really? Like you become yeah. very, very selfish. S- self-centered, yeah. It's very self-centered. And this is what the the book said there about being selfless. Yeah. You know, to yeah. always be thinking about other people. What can you do to make other people happy? Right. Like if that's your main mission in life, like, well, that... I mean that is that is serving God. Yeah. Like you know, and in fact, it's something most people don't do. Mm-hmm. You know, the religious do it. I mean, any religious I've ever met, I watch yeah. them always very carefully. Yeah. I see how they're behaving and how they're <laughs> acting, and I'm yeah. paying attention. You know, and then I take their little cues. Yeah. And I try to roll with it. Well, it's the it's the same. You know, I I find that you know, was it was it grandpa i can't remember i think it was grandpa when one of the nuns was over yeah and she went to grab the burnt cookie yeah or something and, and he, he was said, like no oh, don't oh. take that and she said, oh no this one's perfect this one's perfect she said you know I'm like what it's not even perfect for the dog sister <laughs> like i don't even know why it's on that plate <laughs> yeah you know but like but but 
But ever since when you when those little things happen like that, and that is the way that a religious has an effect on your life. Yes, you know because I I so for so long when I'm cooking dinner or whatever, and I'm making the meat and the potatoes and what, and I think I've said this on the yeah. podcast before, but I I always like would Save serve the up best. the plates and I'd pick the best. Oh, this one's the best. That one's for I me. Cooked it and I'm like, what is wrong with you? That is horrible. I know, but and now I now I make sure my husband gets the best piece first, uh-huh. then the kids, and then last, I'm like, you just take whatever burnt crap is in the bottom. Of I mean, try not to burn the meat, Holly. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, if there's a piece that doesn't look as appealing, yeah, I try to take that piece. You know, yeah. I know. Because of that story. But that's I why. mean, well, the thing is, is we have to understand that we live in a narcissistic society. Right. And we are every, every bit part, part of, of it. Yeah, you know, like we were sure. raised to, I was raised to think of myself. Yeah. Always. Yeah. And not, you know, oh my gosh, you won't expect me to do that. Why, why can't they do that? Why yeah. do I have to do that? Like, I mean, yeah. how many times have you said those words? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. what are so and so doing? Yeah, you're you're more worried about whatever you're else worried is about doing. what everybody else is doing, right? You know, you should be. I don't care what anybody else is doing mm-hmm. ever. Only mm-hmm. what I'm doing, and if I'm not doing enough, how can I expect God's grace to actually right. flow in this dense, dark world? Yeah, you yeah. know. Oh yeah. Okay. Quote: Graciousness of manner proceeds from a heart that wants everyone to be happy. No one will feel quote unquote left out when the gracious sister is around meditation on our lord in his public life will help in the development of graciousness the words quote jesus of nazareth is passing by end quote will suggest the ideal end quote right so quotes in there well, that quote um, so yeah wants everyone to be happy no one will feel left out when the gracious sister is around i mean think about that for one second have you ever been have you ever been in a situation with a religious, a nun in particular, and felt left out? No. I can't think of a time. They they go around and they literally do that. Right. They make sure that everyone is having a good time or that everyone feels included. Well, we had, uh, we had a tea party uh, last year. Yeah. And this is just bringing to mind this to me. We because we had always had a Saint Anne's tea party for the the little girls yeah. at the parish, and it was always just for the little girls. Mm-hmm. Like when we were doing it, yeah, you know. And then the sisters came, and we said to the sisters, we said, "Okay, we're gonna have this Saint Anne's tea party. Oh, that's wonderful, you know." Um, we still did, they were they had just come, yeah, so they weren't prepared, you know. But we did a lot of the work and that. But but. Um, Sister was like, oh, no, 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 no. We have to have, st- we have to, you know, involve the mothers. Like, we have to have yeah. stuff for the mothers to do, too. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, they, they were thinking of everybody. everybody. Not just the little girls. Just not the little girls, right? Yeah. So And I, it was a very nice tea party. It was. It was really nice. Really and it nice. was so much fun. And I thought to myself, I thought, oh, we guess we should have thought about the mothers. mothers. <laughs> <laughs> Giving them some good stuff, stuff to do, to, too. Well, we, we're now going to take a page from the sister's book. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. I'm holding their book in my hand. Not our sisters, but the mother house of the sisters of charity. Right. Great name. Okay. So, quote, finally, a sister's manner should manifest that abounding joyness, joyousness, which betoken and reward the faithful following of Christ. End quote. Right. So, the faithful following of Christ. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, it's... We tend, as traditional Catholics, to to just kind of focus in on that justice yeah. all the time. But, I mean, as I just said, I mean, justice is giving, justice, the virtue of justice is giving another what is owed to, to them. them. Yeah. You know, we just want this heart, we, we have this kind of twisted idea of justice is what I think is about, you know, people getting punished the way they yeah. deserve, you know. <laughs> And um, Getting their just desserts. Yeah, and uh, and the, the spreading of the joy is really the giving of our fellow neighbors. Right. What is their due? Right. Really, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Quote: This expert from a community rule calls to mind the thought of the many things in religious life that should fill the soul with joy. We all know the oft quoted passage from the Imitation of Christ. Quote. If there be joy in the world, truly the man of pure heart possesseth it. End yeah. Quote. Yeah. When I think of the pure heart, I think of 
um, the the Beatitudes, yeah, the, the clean of heart, the pure of heart, they shall see God. Yeah, you know, um, and so I mean, it all it all is linked together, right? Like if you don't have that joy, yeah, you're not in possession of God, right? Right. So we really have to, we really have to, um, you know, do some interior. Well, and it and it does. It goes back to the saints, the science of the saints, and they they had in all their struggle, struggle, all their struggles and strife and sacrificing and pain and torture and whatever they endured. Yeah, they always had joy. Always, they never, never, ever, ever mm-hmm. lost the joy. Right. Even in their their set, you know, you read it in Saint Teresa's book, in the story of the soul. You know, when she's she's feeling some sorrow over like you know um i don't know you know they say the dark night of the senses i don't know if she was having that particular because she didn't say that exactly Uh uh-huh but feeling that god almost kind of removed himself from her yeah that's and that's uh the dark night of the soul that's saint Teresa of avalon no no i know she writes about that like i'm a quit i'm acquitting that her right i'm not that's why i'm saying she didn't say that but you could tell in the writing she was feeling a sorrow there in, right in some of her writing that you know well i i think like i mean i'm not an expert on the dark night of the soul but when god removes himself like um you don't feel you can't you, you don't feel nothing like you just feel yeah. kind of empty and you know when we expect we expect God to fill us up with emotion and love. Right. Like we, you know, where you go in and you see the crucifix and you just start crying. Yeah. You know, and stuff like that. Whereas in the dark night of the soul and stuff like that, all the feelings get removed. Right. And this is, um, this is what they say, right? So all the feelings get removed. And if you can still love God without having the benefit of the feelings. Yeah. The feel goods. Yeah. That is the true test of how much you actually right. love God because you actually get nothing, nothing back. Back in return. Well, and that's why I'm saying, like, so in her writing, you you feel like when you're reading it, the joy is still there. Right. You can tell in her writing. Yeah. She doesn't lose that joy. Uh-huh. Like, she's still, I mean, I, I'm reading this book and I cannot, like, she's the saint for me, I'm going to say. Oh, good. Because she's very simple. Right. And everything is very simple. And I'm like reading it and I'm like thinking, what? Like I had, I've had this book since I was 13. Yeah. And I've read it before, but it's been a long time. Right. So you forget things, right? No, do you forget things. Often you're at different spiritual levels. We're at different spiritual levels. And maybe and, and the first time resonate. I resonate. Re- like yeah. It's, it's like the peeling away of an onion. I mean, of course, like at my age, I've many times you'll be doing something and you do it over and over and over again and it it means almost nothing right and then one day you're like what that's well that's the right word resonate yeah it's really resonating with me because it's like she's she's just so simple yeah and then and then i read it and i look at that and i look at her relationship with god and i'm like you know that simplicity the joy the virtues the just pure and utter um, love. Yeah. Just, you know, that she has for her spouse. Like, it's, it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. You know? And it's like, why, it's, it's just so simple. I know. It's just so simple. Like, it's just St. Teresa is so simple and so amazing at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so anyways. But, uh, okay, where did we leave off here? Okay. Quote, who should show forth this joy if not those whose hearts are wholly given over to Christ? Joyousness of manner does a noble work in this sad, sophisticated world. End quote. Right. So we have a sad, sophisticated world. Sad, sophisticated. Those are funny words together, yeah. aren't they? I'm trying to unpack that. <laughs> <laughs> well, sad, sophi- well, yeah, okay, I get it. We're so, like, we're so, the world is so sophisticated. And this is back in what? In the 50s. 1953, okay? Yeah. We're way more, quote-unquote, sophisticated, but yeah. less dignity and whatever. Oh, yeah, and, and, and I mean, a word that comes with sophistication, too, is also educated. Yeah, you know. Like, but, I mean, I think we're so educated now, all our brains have fallen, fallen out. out. 
Yeah, well, it goes back to we sh we need to simplify everything. Yeah. We're way too, we're way too, oh, I can't stand it. Anyways, um, yeah, sad. Yeah, so, so the joy. The joyousness of manner doesn't The joy and the work. simplicity of St. Teresa brings to the sad, sad sophisticated, sophisticated world. world. She's, it's noble work. It's That's noble. So right there. Right, noble work. Okay, quote, it is a star of Bethlehem that never sets for it is filled with the spirit that the divine infant brought upon the earth. The spirit of hope that makes souls look heavenward. In our effort to cultivate this joyousness of manner, we should frequently say, quote, Jesus, joy of angels, have mercy on us, end quote. And to Our Lady, quote, cause of our joy, pray for us, end quote. Cause of our joy. Cause of our joy. Right there from the litany of Mary. Yeah. Blessed Virgin Mary. And the, the what was the angels? Uh, Jesus, joy of angels, have Jesus, mercy on us. Jesus, joy of angels, have mercy on us. You know, if we if we have a hard time with the joy, and I'm gonna say I'm gonna I'm gonna guess, uh, ladies, um, well we're not just talking to ladies anymore and gentlemen, and gentlemen, yeah, yeah, that you know finding the joy is very difficult because we live in a very oppressed world, right, where the anxiety levels are way too high and the depression la levels are way too high, right, you know, and if we find ourselves in one of these two categories mm -hmm. like depressed or anxious Just, yeah we have to kind of evaluate the situation here and say these things are happening because my level of joy is not appropriate right can we talk about the anxiousness for one second sure because I want to say something what I want to talk about my test Oh, well, there wasn't, I was going to mention it because there's another, oh, there another spot, but we can talk about it. No, we can talk yeah, about it. Yeah, because now. I, I want to, I want to, I've made a correlation to the spiritual life. Yeah. And the, uh, personality thing. Yes. Okay? I'm not going to go about the, this is not about sanguine and what all, all that. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we all know how I feel about that. But this is, this is a spiritual growth. Yeah. One hundred percent. And I I don't even know don't feel like I have to say this, but it should be known. But spiritual growth one hundred percent is growth. Yes. In your personality, and I have the proof of that. Yes, you do. Because I took the Jordan Peterson Personality Personality Test. test. Yes. What's it called? It's uh, um, Understanding an, Yourself. Understanding yourself. I highly re I highly recommend Everybody, Everybody to, to take, take it. it. It costs money. How much it, was it? Uh, nine ninety five. Oh, I, I thought think. it was thirty dollars. So that, it's only no. ten dollars. What a bargain! But I think that's U.S. But whatever, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's Anyways, worth it. Every it's dime. worth it. I Every took. Dime. I took this test in twenty eighteen. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And um, eh, did all right. <laughs> the results were good. I, the results were good. <laughs> like, let's not let let's, let's not even try to sugarcoat we this. We won't okay? sugarcoat it. Um. And then I took this test last week. Yeah. So what are we? 2018, 2024? Mm hmm I it, my mom shared it again. Didn't what? you share it to your wall? Oh yeah, because we were talking and I, I mean I I I highly would go just Google it. Just Understand Dorn Peterson. Well I'll include I'll myself. include a link. Okay? Yeah. So mark that down, another link. But anyways, I'm I'm telling you, when I took this test the first time in twenty eighteen, I was barely a Catholic. Yes. I, I, I'm going to say well, that. Well, apparently the test showed that. And the test showed that. And this is not this is not a Catholic test, okay? This is not a Catholic test. What it is, is it nails your personality to T. It's completely accurate. 100%. 100% accurate. Everything this test said is 100%. And so... And I don't really know how it works. I don't know how it works because it, it asks you like... A, it asks you weird random, random questions question. and it's honestly... What is it? There's there's like little bubbles. Like, yeah. Uh, it, highly disagree or, or strongly disagree or highly agree. And it's like five bubbles. And then you, you either are neither in the middle. You, you can select either neither, neither agree nor disagree or you can select... Um, agree. One after that, agree or strongly agree. And then there's disagree or strongly disagree. Those right. are your only options. Right. So it asks you things like, um, you know, I'm trying to think of a question off the bat. But anyways, um, anyways, I can't think of one. But just do it yourself. But the thing is, is I took this test in 2018. 
and my scores were di- despicable. Oh. Like, I was anxious, uh, neurotic. Neurotic, yeah. If you want to find out how neurotic you are... There, take this test. Take this test because um, it, it'll tell you how neurotic it, you are. And it gives you a percentage, right? Yeah. And not only that, it gives you a full explanation. And when you're reading the explanation back, you're like, that is me. Yeah. That is me 100%, right? So anyway, so I took this test, and then I took it again last week, and my scores were so different. Yeah. Like, such an improvement. My neuroticism was way down. Yeah. And then my, but my agree my agreeableness. Yeah. Way up. Right. And I'm telling you, that, that is from the spiritual life. No, I know. But I said. That I, is I, not from anything worldly. That, the difference in that test in myself yeah. is because of spiritual growth. And I told you that back in 2018, didn't yeah, I? Yeah, you did. Yeah. And I was I was just like, whatever, mom, don't care. This guy's dumb. <laughs> I was like, he don't know me. I know everything. <laughs> you know, but that but that I'm No, but you did that. think those that your score was right though. In twenty eighteen? Yeah. Oh yeah. I wasn't I wasn't negating that. But I was just like you're just kinda of like, yeah, whatever, this is me. I like it's your attitude about it. Right. I was like, so what? So what? I'm neurotic. Okay, who cares? Because reality the reality is, spiritually, I was not in a place to care. Right. You know? Right, right. But the, but the thing is, you know, because I took the test too. And yeah, we're not going to talk about your score. <laughs> <laughs> we will. I don't no, know. you're not talking about your scores. <laughs> I'm not talking She's about not it. not allowed to. Okay. <laughs> I'm just teasing. So, but anyway, and you took it, and I said, and I told well, you. Well, I will tell, I will share with you. In neuroticism, my mom is a zero. Yeah. Zero. As in, there is not a neurotic bone in her body. Yeah. So. Zero. Because it's a percentage, right? right. So you're like, and you know, some scores like you're 30%, 20%, some of the Well, what he says, how it works, it's, it's, so it's a score from 1 to 100. So how Jordan Peterson says, so if, I, if I'm in a room with 100 people, I will be the very least neurotic, neurotic person, person in the room. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And my there, there's volatility too. Yeah. And I was zero at volatility as well. I know. So I will be the very least volatile person in the room. I would have liked you to take this test in, I uh, let's say, circa 2000. Well, I told you that. Eight? I told you that. <laughs> I said when we took it, I said, I said, Holly, I said I made my score that. Yeah. No, I know. I said. I, I wish you could go back and take it into. <laughs> I said volatility. This woman's off the charts. Okay. Oh, I would have been off the chart. I, I would have and that's been because of me. I said this is this is a spiritual Total change. Day. Yes. This is not. This is not. Oh yeah, I was born that way. No. You know, like no, it's not. This is a spiritual change. And so you and I was going to tell you. I said you know you should. And Jordan Peterson, um, you're only allowed to take this test once. So well, I took it twice. Well, you have to have a different email address. You have to trick the system. Oh, you're saying okay, I get what you're saying. So yeah. under your email, you got one shot. Which I don't understand because wouldn't you want to see if you have change? Well, I mean, what people would do is I don't like these scores. Oh, he so what he's preventing people from doing is taking it again, right? And after. again and again. Like you right. you've gotten So you get the score that you want. You've gotten a, you know, five, six years. Right. Cha- you know, yeah. from six years ago. Yeah. I mean, I might take it again, and I might, I might score higher in neur- neuroticism. Like you do move, you do move all over the map. And I, I like, s- I will, I will admit to you, ladies, I'm not perfect, despite what you may think. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just teasing. But the one thing I do, like, you do see, I like to, I do like taking it because it does show you where you need work too. Right. Like I can still be very. My volatility score went way down. Yeah. But not as down as it needs to be. Right. And I do I do still have moments where I do get vi- vi- well, violent. Well, violent is violent is the not the right word. It's your it's your reaction to things it's too. It's anger, like anger. how angry you get. You know, yeah. like when, you know, whatever. Yeah. Kids like spill cereal yeah, on the floor so I do, or something. I do have you know? a bit of control that needs to let go there to not like to say like God's will, you know. That's why I you told you. Evil, I said yeah. I said neuroticism and volatility. Mm-hmm. All fall under the category 
uh, how able are you willing to accept the will of God? But I will say, don't like, don't take the test though and go, oh, I'm I'm eighty five percent volatile. But it also says down in there, I can't remember the exact wordings, but y- you're also very high in agreeableness. Yes. So your vo- volatility or whatever that word is, I can't say it. It it does, mine does kind of measure out a little bit. Uh-huh. Because of my agreeable, because I'm so high in agreeableness. Like there, there's, like, so you take the test and take the time to read through everything. Right, right. Anyway, and, and $10 really see, well, spent, well spent. Well spent. And it was funny because I messaged my mom. I messaged you and I was like, so I took that Jordan Peterson test again. And you were like, I was just coming on here to tell you to take it again. And yeah, because you would see a, you, you would definitely see, see a change. Because yeah. spiritual growth does change, change a person 100 and that's the proof that's what i'm saying this whole thing was to say that is literally the proof right there yeah that is literally the proof so i mean i still have miles and miles and miles and miles to go but the spiritual growth that i've had from 2018 to 2024 20, mm-hmm. the test proves it is what i'm saying right you know? so anyways uh no i lost front okay quote cool. A sister can carry on a lifelong apostolate winning souls to love what is of God simply by the exercise of a religious, cordial, gracious, joyous manner. So often one of these qualities is lacking and the sister's power for good is thereby lessened, end quote. Yeah, so so by not, what, what was it, cordial? Cordial, gracious, joyous manner. A cordial, gracious, joyous manner. So, yeah. so the... Uh, it's kind of a little bit of a warning to the sisters. If you're missing one of those yes. things, your power to do good is going to be lacking. Yeah. So that's the same for us too. If we're yeah. missing those things, yeah, you know, yeah, like we can be we can be religious. So the exercise of a religious, cordial, gracious. Oh, religious. Manner. Yes, we can be religious, but if we don't have a joyous manner, yeah, we we're not being the light for anybody, as far as I'm concerned. You yeah, know? and as far as the book is concerned. Yes. Well, no, I know what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't write the book on good manners. <laughs> but anyways, okay. Three condition. Okay, quote, sorry. Three conditions have a detrimental effect upon a sister's manner. Namely, pressure of duties, ill health, and advancing years. It is safe to say that the majority of religious are overburdened with work. Many are struggling with very real problems. Tensity of nerves results and after... That following abruptness of manner, inconsiderate acts, and hasty words, end quote. Right. So, it's, I mean, and that happens to us. We get overwhelmed with our workload. And that, duties, yeah. And that's what hap- And that's when we get a little snippy. Well, pressures of duties, for sure. Yeah. Like, if you have that pressure weighing down on you, that yeah. you're not fulfilling your duty, or you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, or, or you know, you're running out of time, or yeah. all those things put pressure on you. Uh-huh. It can cause you to snap or snip or, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, this is just a small example, but, like, if you're having a, a, a dinner party. Because I know that this is this is an area where I would get a little bit more edgy. Mm-hmm. You know, because I do a lot of those things, dinner parties and stuff yeah. like that, right? You know, and, okay, you know, and, and you're working with people and they're like, you know, you know, no, you don't do it that way. Come on, we got to do this. We got to get this dinner out, you yeah. know. And because you're on a time crunch, right? You're right. on a line. And, and, you know, and you tend to get, you don't you don't feel like you have time to go, oh, you cut them in circles. That's lovely. You know, they should have been squares, <laughs> yeah. right? You know, like it's not, oh, well. Oh, well. <laughs> you know, you don't. Those are the those are the times that you, um, you get very tense. And, again, if we're if we're keeping our level of joyousness, yeah, we have to override ourselves well, to, I mean, and say, oh, I guess it circles it is, you know? And uh, yeah. I mean, well, think that reaction that you just said, that's the reaction of a sister. Yes. A nun. Yes. Oh, you did circles. Well, that's okay then. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. and I'm sure they work very hard at that. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm just... I've been around a lot of nuns in my life. Yeah. Not not every day, but over the years of, you know, growing up as a traditional Catholic, I've been around a lot of nuns. And there's not a moment where I can call recall a nun snipping at somebody. Yeah. Snipping like, I, I said, said squares. <laughs> you know, like it just, it's not natural for them. But it's not, 
like we have to understand that it's not like you put on that habit and boom, you're endowed with all these great virtues. Yeah. They have to work really hard at that. Right. They're working really hard to do that. And so if they're doing that, so should we. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Like, you know, it's not, it, it's, there's, there is the power of the habit and there's the, you know, but we have to understand that just because we haven't, um, you know, dedicated our life in that way to God, we're, we have still have to. Well, I mean, for way. us, I, I'd say the big difference is they put on the habit and they know they've dedicated their life to God. Yeah. We live in the world and have we really dedicated ourselves oh, to God? Yeah. You know, yeah. so we have to be as fervently in the world as dedicated to God. Oh, yeah. Like, especially, like, I mean, the, the goal here is to be a saint. Right. It's not to be like, it's not to make it to purgatory, yeah. you know. Like, the goal is, like, sure, you're in the world, but the, the goal is every much to dedicate your life to God. God. Yeah. You know, yeah. so, I mean, it applies, right? Mm-hmm. Um, okay, quote, in the case of poor health, pain and weakness make graciousness and cordiality difficult and peevishness may develop. Again, sisters advancing in years feel the effects of physical attract- attrition and the sparkle of joyousness vanishes, end quote. Mm. Right. So it's, it's hard to be cordial and gracious when you're weak and ill. Well, that's the truth. Yeah. I remember what, I mean, the last time I was ill, remember I said I had to lock myself in my room? What? Remember a couple of podcasts ago, I was sick. Yeah. And I didn't want to be sick. And, oh, right, right, right. And I knew that I couldn't talk to a yeah, person. person. because. I couldn't, I couldn't, there was no part of me that was going to go cordial or gracious. Right, right, right. And I was just like, I'm going to say things I regret. I will regret. So I'm going to lock myself away. I'm just going to my bedroom. Nobody talk <laughs> to me. Okay, quote. Yet even with all this, a sister's manner remains one of her most powerful helps in promoting the honor and glory of God. And at all costs, through self-discipline and charity, she must strive to retain her interest in others, her serenity, her gentleness, her joy, and to see that these qualities are apparent in her manner. This recommendation applies particularly to our intercourse with one another. End quote. Yeah, so the book is basically saying just because you're sick, you don't get a pass. Right. Exactly. You know, you might not have the ability to go lock yourself in a room. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, you might have to fake it. Mm-hmm. You might have to do a lot of, you know, and and that you're ex- they're expected to. Yeah. They're expect you don't you don't get to be crabby, you know. And how many people? Like I mean, well, you see it all the time. Like when people are sick, they're just. Yeah. They're na- They're generally nasty, and yeah. and then people go, oh, well, they're sick. I mean, which is what we should do. do. Like you know, right. that's the charity from our. Part. That's a charity. Charity from our end is to give people a pass. I mean, it's very important to realize that the rules, and how to behave, is for us. Not for everybody. Else. Not for everybody else. Like if you're when you're, de- how do I say this right? When you're dealing with yourself, mm-hmm. you you apply everything harshly to, to your yourself. to yourself. And you to, give everybody else a pass. You give everybody else a pass. Yeah. You give everybody else the charity and, and you know, that. Yeah. That's how you have to view things. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to point out that's the exact opposite to the way the Pharisees viewed things. Right. They, they, they were harsh to everybody else. Oh, you're not doing this. You're not doing this. And you're not doing this. But to themselves... All the leniency in the all world. All the leniency in the well, world. Well, it's very hypocritical. Right. That's it's what. Just, it's that's exactly. That's what. Ma- that's exactly what makes a hypocrite. Right. Yeah. Okay. Quote: A sister must realize that one cannot assume merely as an external characteristic a manner that appears to be religious, cordial, gracious, and joyous, unless these visible qualities rest upon a solid foundation of virtue. The result will be a superficial veneer. A manner thus acquired would would have no influence. Neither should a sister be satisfied if she feels that she possesses recollection and charity as interior qualities of the soul. These virtues must find expression in her manner, otherwise their potentiality for good is lost. Something of this thought was in our Lord's mind when he said, quote, So let your light shine before men. End quote. No one would doubt the inherent sanctity of St. Francis Xavier, yet his biographers assert that it was through his affable gracious kindly manner that he brought so many souls to god end quote 
How funny that they use St. Francis. I know. Saint I was did. just thinking, like, did you read this? No, but I just, when I whenever I think of a great saint with these great powers, you know, and this great big, I'm just going to keep calling it a grand gesture for lack of a better word. I think of one time when I read about St. Francis Xavier and how many, how he baptized so many souls. Right. Like he converted so many people. So I always use him as the example. And here the book is telling us he did that through gracious. Through gracious kind of, like, so that kind of brings it round. Yeah. He has the, he had what St. Teresa. <laughs> so and the idea here between all that is we must have those virtues in ourselves so that they're second nature. Right. Right. I mean, well, and let's be real. I'm, I'm, I'm in no way implying that St. Francis Xavier stood on a soapbox. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I do firmly believe that anybody who converts anybody, uh -huh. it's done through, this is just my own, what I think, my own belief, I think it's done through quiet prayer, sacrificing, and a good saint, a uh, good saintly uh -huh. uh, way of living, uh -huh. not standing on a soapbox. You know, well, I one of one of the books that kind of changed uh, my life was a book called Fatima and You. Yeah. Because um, again, um, it was written in the forties, but I like to. I I always like to go back to the old books because in the old books, um, it gives you a, a clear idea of actually actually what the thought was at the time. Right. Because there's been a lot of writings on Fatima, and I find them, uh, you know, I get all. Yeah. Yeah, like, I'm just, like, I don't even know, like, I, are people making stuff up? Like, I don't even know what's going on anymore, yeah. like, you know, with all this, the Fatima Center and all this stuff, right? I question a lot of it. But anyway, so I went back to this book called Fatima and You, and in the book, what it said was that um, the idea was for sanctity to spread. Yeah. And the way that sanctity spreads is by you becoming a saint. Right. Right, so if you become, and that's what that book just said, so if you become very saintly and gracious and you become all the things that make a saint, yeah, it, you pass that on and it spreads. Well, and it's like, I mean, we've said this many times, it's allowing God to work through you. Right. You're, you're, not, you're not the end all be all. Right. You're not, you're just an instrument. Right. That's it. Yes. The tool of divine you're just providence. The tool of divine providence, and and in reality, when you're striving for sanctity and you're striving to become closer to God, that is your main goal. Right. So whatever God does through you, yeah, that's God. Yes. You know, you're not so concerned with that. Right. Right. Like, I mean, it's nice to save souls, and it's nice to like. I'm not saying that. I'm not trying to downplay that. But what I'm saying is, is your intention has to be firmly fixated on God and nothing else. Right, right. I think. Anyways. Yes, right, right. No, that you, you know, have to do, you have to become that person. Yeah. To God. And I mean, you you think of it. Like, the like, imitation of if, Christ. If you put it into a worldly, into a worldly acts, aspect and a worldly kind of metaphor, okay? Like when you love somebody so much, like let's say, you know, your first boyfriend or whatever. And you, you like, I love, you know, you're in love and you're whatever. And you bring him home to meet your family. Yeah. You want everyone to love him. Right. As much as you do. Yeah. You want everyone to be like, this guy's so great. We, you know, you want them to accept him. Yeah. You want them to, you know, act like you made a good choice or whatever. And that's a very poor worldly metaphor for God because. Yeah. But when you think about it, if we love God so much. Yeah. If you want God to be everything to you and you love God so much, you will want everyone around you uh -huh. to love him. Right. Because you love him that much. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? So my poor worldly metaphor <laughs> <laughs> pales in comparison to what we should be, but but that's the way I think of it. Yes, yeah. You're not you're not really concerned with changing everybody. Right. You just want them to love your boyfriend. Right. Like, do you know what I mean? And and if we're thinking about God, well, it should be ten times more than that. Right, right. You know, so that's my attempt at poor worldly metaphor. Yeah. No, but it's right. It's right, right? So the sanctity spreads through sanctity. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and um, I mean, I always kind of use that as a gauge. Yeah. 
like, oh, man, you must not be very poorly because nothing's spreading here. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's picking up what you're, you're laying down. down. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm laughing, but. but yeah, I get what you're saying. <laughs> but, yeah, so we'll, we're, we're, we're over it. We're almost at hour 10 here. So we'll leave it there. But next week we'll start into manner in particular rate relationships. So that should be interesting. Right. It's all very interesting. Yeah, I do. I like this book. So anyways, we'll leave it there. And um, hopefully, God willing, we'll be back next week. And just to put it out there again, if anybody has any shops or anything you want us to share, we're more than happy to put your name out there. If you have good Catholic holy content, good set of a contest holy Catholic content. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) No, I just want to put that little in there. Anyways, um... So anyway, so um, yeah, we'll, we'll leave it there. And um, we hope that you all have a very blessed and, and great week. And as always, may our Lord bless you and our lady guide you. And, and St. Teresa, pray for us. Pray for us.